America's largest all sports radio station. Sports Radio 810 WHB presents Between the Lines with Kevin Keatsman, Kansas City's favorite sports program. I'm getting tired. You know what? Me too. Me too. Because half the year we have to leave it open or we die in here. So you get used to leave it open. Is that today? Well, it was. No, it's, it's cracked a little bit. Not today. <laughs> all Look right. at all these Try crazies or... running the halls here. True enough. True enough. We don't need to discuss this on the air. We'll I talk know. about this during the next break. <laughs> okay. I tend to leave the door open. I'm supposed to shut the door. I forget. And Todd has to shut the door. So, in the running, joke understandably, is the door's broken. Danny's not going to close it. Understandably, he's upset about that. I'm not upset. It's just my fun game to play with I you. Know. I, I, I feel bad, but I just, it's like, yeah, it's Danny, like I, if I, you felt bad, you'd change it. Not bad enough to stop not doing it. <laughs> like I spent my entire, for instance, I know we have to get the race. I spent my entire childhood with a refrigerator where the door closed by itself. So you just let it go. I constantly leave the to this day leave the refrigerator door open because i spent the first 20 years well you know off and on i was you know it's my parents house till he's 25 with the refrigerator door that just would close my Fine. fridge door makes noise if you don't close it at beeps oh mine does too yeah. eventually it helps i thought you were gonna say you're born in a barn that's why you leave doors open <laughs> no, my, although my, my dad often did say you were born of course he was one of those psycho people who shut the lights off while you're in the bathroom you know in the shower <laughs> saving energy baby. dad Anyway, men here. Racing boys are joining us now, and they are in a fun spot, which is going to be a fun spot for a lot of people. I well, think. they're we're actually, talking about fun. They're spot. an independent spot. I know, but well, although there's nothing wrong with independence, <laughs> it is right. a fun spot. We're going they, to talk about a fun spot. Guys, I saw a lot of pictures of the Hollywood Casino on Facebook and different places. What did it look like firsthand today? Amazing. I, I tell you, it's a lot bigger than you think. You you think of a, a small casino outside of turn temp- number two, it's anything but small. Mm-hmm. Trust me on that one. And the thing that got me this morning is right after they had the uh, dignitaries in for the ribbon-cutting ceremony, Clint Boyer and Casey Kane were there, and they cut the ribbon. It wasn't more than a minute later the doors opened <laughs> and people flooded in, and two minutes later you would have thought that casino had been open forever. As full as that was, and the slot machines were going crazy after that. And it's all on one level, right, from what I understand? It is on one level, and they've got a beautiful view of turn two outside the sports bar up in the corner. You can go out on a patio. You you might want to go out there now and see what that looks like because I, I think come race day, no chance if you're getting close to that rail. But it is a beautiful facility. And the one thing that stood out to me the most is I was out in Vegas last year for about a week when we were chasing the national tour. And this casino, unlike the other casinos, and they, they're all nice around here. Let's make sure we're clear on that. This one has more of that Las Vegas feel to it, maybe more so than the boats that we have down by the river. Why is that? I know they advertise that. They clearly are looking for that. Why do you feel like it has that feel? I don't know. I guess it's just the way, it, the layout of it. It doesn't feel like it's, uh, I don't know, it's just spread out more. It doesn't feel like you're on a boat. It doesn't right? feel like yeah. you're on a boat, I guess, really, is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't <laughs> feel like it's narrow. You know how you've got that narrow feeling of the boats, right. and they're kind of just square. Uh, the the, uh, the way they've done the... Uh, the decor of the place is just unbelievable, really. Well, when, it sounds great. Um, the idea today was it, it's open for business. They're out there going, but this project is not done yet, right? Uh, they still got a little bit of work to do. The casino itself, I mean, it, it's all finished. Yet. Now, someday they're going to add a hotel and they're going right. to add some other amenities, which the, that was in their original plans. They had to scale that back when the economic crisis came here four years ago. So Hollywood Casino stepped in. This is a 50-50 project between the International Speedway Corporation and Penn Gaming. And, of course, uh, there was a big... Uh, uh, competition for who was going to be able to build the casino out in that area. And, of course, uh, as we all know, Kansas Speedway won that. Uh, this really will set this facility apart from any other motorsports facility in America with this casino uh, hovering right over turn number two. Uh, it is a, a quality project. Lisa France Kennedy, who is part of the France family, uh, she was in attendance today for the ceremony 
and talked about how this is such a big thing, not only for Kansas, but also for NASCAR. As you can see, we've done something that's a little different by combining a first class sports facility along with the casino. And I think it's one of a kind. I think it's going to be the envy of everyone in the business. Our continued uh, partnership with the state and the unified government started many years ago. And we had a mutual vision to create a true destination for visitors all over. When we first started, and before we put the shovel in the ground um, on the Kansas Speedway, there was very little out here. And this area has been so supportive with the tourists, with the race fans, that we just want to continue building on this. And a big reason why they've got two NASCAR Sprint Cup events at Kansas Speedway now. Who would have thought that when the track was first built in 2001? You mentioned the sports bar on turn two and the fact that they have the deck and that it would be uh, a tough place to get to on a race day. Is that the type of thing that they would probably use for a private you know, private party or something like that? I, I can't imagine they're just going to say first come, first serve to the sports bar gets the rail. It doesn't sound likely to me, but did, have you, did you hear anything about that? No, I didn't hear anything about that, to be honest with you, Danny. I would assume that there's going to be a priority of who gets out there first, but I'm not sure how they're going to uh, decide who that is, though. Let's talk a little bit about the race car guys who were there today. And I know Clint Boyer was out there. He's got to be extra excited. They feel, you know, this is home track, and the area just keeps growing and growing out there. Yeah, for many years he drove right by this area, which was nothing but uh, trees and empty land when he was racing at Lakeside Speedway many years ago and he's pretty amazed by how far this whole area has come, an area he's very familiar with uh, coming from the state of Kansas. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, just to think back, you know, you, you know, everybody knows from around this area what's become of Wyandotte County because of this racetrack and this is just another this is the next chapter, it really is. I mean, what a great venue for, for a race fan to come watch us race, put on a good show on this racetrack, come over and enjoy you know, this casino. It's unbelievable. It truly really is like a Las Vegas casino. Reminds me so much of, of walking into Vegas and uh, it's right here in our own backyard, turn two. That is Clint Boyer, and he, along with Casey Kane, were both out there. But I think it's got to be more special to Clint having come from just down the road and familiar with the area. It's his home track. What uh, what news are we getting here as we're working our way towards uh, Daytona? Well, I think the the biggest news is fuel injection and how the drivers going to work with each other. They've they've got a lot of things they've changed since last year. I mean, if you look at the front end of these cars, they've made it to where they're going to overheat a lot quicker. You know, they used to be able to carry five gallons of of water in the radiator. Now they're talking two, and and they change the pressure of the radiator cap it's not really a radiator cap but that's the best way to explain it to where if they do draft with somebody too long it's going to start spitting out water and cause the car to overheat and once you start spitting out water with only two gallons it's only a matter of time before you start losing horsepower and then ultimately you're going to lose the motor so they've got that going on they've got the fuel injection going on they've changed the rear springs there's so many elements they've changed to restrictor plate racing down there they've added a little more uh, uh, size to the whole of the restrictor plate you know cars were running 206 mile an hour down there at daytona during practice i think they're going to slow them down try to get them just a little bit under 200 I, I think they would prefer to see them about 198 200 not that that makes a big difference but uh it makes nascar feel better about it so a lot of storylines we really don't know if we're going to still see these two car drafting uh for you know what maybe a lap or two and then they're going to switch and when these guys start switching positions and the lead car needs to fall back and be the car that pushes that's when you're going to have problems and especially if these guys are going to run in big groups of cars and that's what nascar wants that's what the fans want they want these guys to run in giant groups and we'll just have to see uh, what happens on yeah. february 26th to get the 43 cars out there in race conditions really no, but you don't before know that i think in the budweiser shootout which is coming up the saturday uh, a week before the Daytona 500 with probably half the field, then you'll see in the Daytona 500, you get some kind of an idea. And, of course, they'll have the Gatorade dual qualifying races the Thursday before the Daytona 500. But really, until they get out there and start racing each other, we don't know what they're going to. You know, as Scott just mentioned, the fans have voted they like the big packs of cars, not yes. the two-car tandems. They've got rid of the radio communication between drivers. I like that. 
We don't need drivers to be communicating with each other. They're supposed to be competitors out on the racetrack. So uh, it's it's going to be an interesting speed weeks for sure to see what kind of racing we'll get with all of these changes. Specifically, you guys got to, to talk to Clint today about the you know the casino and everything that's going on out there. But what's he think about this this season coming up? He got only one win last year on Sprint Cup, but it was a restrictor plate race, right? He won the the fall race at Talladega. Mm-hmm. So you know, how's he feel about his future right now? I think he's got to feel optimistic. I really didn't talk to him much about that today, but we did talk to him a couple weeks ago. And, you know, I was telling Kirk today at lunch, I, I personally, I feel that Clint Boyer's got a chance to win a race or two, and I think he still has a chance to get into the chase for the championship. Are they championship caliber team? I'm not sold on that yet. But they have improved the quality of teammates when it comes to drivers. you got Mark Martin. you got Martin Truex Jr., who has been the guy that's been with that team for a couple years. But you throw Mark Martin in there, I mean, uh, that guy is somebody that the young guys can lead on and, and get advice. And let's face it, you know, Toyota has, has uh, had pretty good programs over the years, the last couple years. And, and I've got a feel that uh, with the power that they make and the way the cars handle, um, and we saw it last year with David Rudiman. We saw it with Martin Truex. Uh, we saw these cars qualify good. I think Martin Truex had three top fives. So the equipment's good enough to get up there. Now they've got better drivers. Let's just see if they can close the deal and start yeah, picking it, up some wins. It's just a big change for Clint. You yeah. know, since he got started in NASCAR, he was with Richard Childress Racing. And, of course, that ended at the end of last year, moving over to Michael Waltrip Racing, new manufacturer, new everything, new crew chief. Uh, I think he's happy. He's in a good mood. I think he feels good about uh, his new crew chief, Brian Patty, and how they're going to be able to work together. But uh, it's it's a career changer for uh, Clint to see. And I think he's probably up there uh, with a team that you wouldn't think would have a lot of resources, but they actually do. Mm-hmm. And they were on the cusp of uh, contending for chase spots here in the last couple of years. David Rudiman's won a couple of races. So, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how he does right out of the boat, right out of the gate at Speedways because Clint really does well on these restrictor plate tracks. I'll pick him to win two races this year. Let's talk a little bit about Carl Edwards. Uh, he's the one of our local racers who's announced that he's not going to run nationwide. Is that isn't that correct? That is correct. Right. Mm-hmm. And what do you think is you know you see some guys who are really successful when they do that, like Kyle Busch. Uh, a lot of guys shy away from it. Some other guys like it. What do you think his reasoning is, and do you think it will his reasoning will be effective? Well, I mean, he came one spot short of winning the championship. You know, I, I think that's what it boils down to. He's got to tell himself now, all right, what can I do different than I did last year? And obviously the team could perform better. At certain points during the 2011 season, they were a little off of their game, and Carl wasn't having the results that he wanted. So now Carl's got to look back and say, all right, what can I do different? And really the only thing that I can see that he could do different is concentrate on the cup side and just forget about the nationwide side. I don't think it bothers him so much at the start of the year. I think Carl's gung-ho. You know, he's kind of a guy that's got to be doing something on Saturday, so he'd just soon be in a race car. But I think when it comes down to it, at the end of the year, mentally, I think it's too taxing on a driver to have to think about both. And I just think Carl wants to do anything he can to win that championship. Yeah, and I think he's not uh, negatively affected by coming short of winning that championship last year. I think he's motivated. He's that type of a guy that's just not going to let that affect him in a negative way. And I think he'll be just as strong beginning the season as he was at the end of last year, I think. Well, the tough part is you're just a couple of laps away from winning. Now you're 30 some dates away from winning that's got to have just really been eating at him for a couple of months sure i mean you just think about it one spot he only had to finish ahead of one car in that final race all he had to do is win that race he runs second but if he doesn't run second if they flip he wins the championship it's you know that what that's i think the hardest part to deal with is that knowing that you tied somebody in the points and still didn't win the championship uh, it's got to be frustrating for him. And I know Carl wants to win it in the worst way. And, again, I think he's looking at the Nationwide Series and just anything that he can change that m- might have a chance to improve what he does on the cup side, I think that's what he's doing. Wouldn't that eat at him more, though, if he had made mistakes in that last race or well, let's, choked let's and be, fell short? I mean, he ran as well as he could but, run in that race, started up front, and ran second. He just got beat at the well, end. Well, let's be fair, though. There was a period during those last – 
10, 15 races where Carl wasn't consistent as he could have been. I mean, that's uh, it's a fact. I mean, yeah, he had some good runs at times, but then other days that he was just terrible. And I can't go, I can't think of the tracks off the top of my head that he was having bad runs at. But I know that there was a handful of races in those final fifteen that he just needed to perform better and didn't. The uh, when you're talking about this year, uh, this week of the Super Bowl, they'll put out surveys of certain things and. NFL, of course, rules. 33% of American sports fans identify the NFL as their favorite sport. They add college football, and it's 49%. But, but they did a, a thing about how where they stand as opposed to a few years ago, and NASCAR is 8% down from 11% three years ago. Where do you think the sport stands as we're starting 2012? I think it's. I think they're moving upwards again. I, I don't think we'll ever get back to where we were at the late ni- the uh, late eighties, early nineties. I don't see that happening. NASCAR has limited the amount of seats that they sell now. They offer at these tracks, and I think that's helped uh, attendance. And, and I think that the sponsors out there, corporate America, I think that they're starting to come back to the sport a little bit. I'm very excited about what's going on. Not only NASCAR, but all of motorsports. You know, I'm in the promoting game now, and. And I travel all over the country, and I see the attendance at the grassroots level all around the United States and at the NASCAR level starting to inch its way back up. And I just think, that, you know, it was tough since 2009. 2009 just about wiped everybody out, not only motorsports. And with motorsports being so corporate dependent, um, it really was going to affect us. But I, I start... I'm starting to see uh, uh, more of those sponsors trickle back into the sport. Well, I think the quality of racing last year was great. I, that I you helped. Know, when right. you watch, the, they changed the point system. It, it amounted to a very tight points battle at the end. But really, we saw some great races, saw a lot of different winners last year. So if the quality of racing continues into 2012 like it was last year, you know, the fans are going to come back. Mm-hmm. They're going to, And the ratings are going to come back up if the racing is good. Uh you know, fans will watch. Let me add to that real quick. Kirk hit a, a point right there. Think about the racing out on the track, and I think the teams have figured out what makes these cars work better. They took away the wing. They put a spoiler back on it. They're working on the geometry of these cars for the last couple of years. When the drivers first started running these cars, they hated them. They couldn't get them to turn. They couldn't get them to handle. They had all kinds of problems with it. I think the teams have got their hands on these cars. They're working well, and that makes better action out on the track. We're talking to the racing boys there at Independence at the World Headquarters. They've been out at Hollywood Casino, which is open for business and ready to rock and roll now. And, guys, uh, I, we didn't say we were going to talk about this. I haven't talked to you about it. But I happen to know, uh, as I drove up Old Nolan Road the other day to mm-hmm. go to my mother's house, that uh, KCIR is no more now. It's gone. Uh, any update on what happened there and if there's any chance there's going to be a, a strip anywhere around town? They're still looking at sites around town, and they're hoping that the city of Kansas City, Missouri, can help them in finding a site. But I think the bottom line is somebody's going to have to come up with some dollars Mm -hmm. to make it happen. It's one thing to find a new site here in the Kansas City area. It's a whole other thing to find somebody that's got the money to uh, be able to construct. It's not cheap building an asphalt drag strip. Uh, but if that happens, I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic that one day it'll happen. may not be this year, mm-hmm. but at some point it's going to happen because the interest is there for drag racing in this community, and there's enough passion there that i got to believe someone will step forward uh, within the next couple of years and uh, build a new racetrack. I will tell you, there's two groups we're hearing that are attempting to put a drag strip here in the Kansas City area. Uh, Todd Bridges, who is the general manager of KCIR for uh, several years. I know that him and a group of uh, gentlemen that are looking into it, they've had a couple meetings. I believe also Rob Park, who is a past owner of KCIR, is looking into a property around the metro area, trying to create a, a new environment for, listen, we, we've got to have a track right here in the city. It has to be done, because if not, we're going to have a bunch of kids out there drag racing on the streets this summer. And, you know, that's not, it's an uncontrolled environment. And that's what was great about Grudge Night at KCIR, Friday night, Wednesday nights, a place for the teenagers to go and run their cars in a controlled environment. And if we do not allow a KCIR or, or, or a group to open up a, a drag strip around here, we're going to be back to the days where kids are getting killed out on the streets uh, drag racing. What do the racing boys have in store tomorrow? 
Well, we're going to talk about Lakeside Speedway, another track that's had some problems here in the last uh, year with the flood. Uh, as everybody knows, it falls racing in Kansas City. A flood came through uh, Wyandotte County out where Lakeside Speedway is located in late June last year. Forced the cancellation of the remainder of the year. Mark Olson's going to be with us on tomorrow morning's show to uh, give us an update on how things are progressing towards reopening the track in April. And we're, we've got some uh, a full interview with Clint Boyer from uh, Hollywood Casino, and we'll be talking about the uh, grand opening Hollywood Casino tomorrow morning. And we've well. got some Casey Kane sound as well that we'll run. Sounds good. Guys, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks. Thank you. That, that's the Racing Boys here on Between the Lines. Frank Martin comes your way next. You're listening to America's... Take it easy, guys. Thanks, hey, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate no it. No problem, buddy. Have a great weekend. 10 WHB. The Racing Boys and Track Talk, brought to you by McCarthy Chevrolet and Olathe, with a $10,000 low-price guarantee.